Hey guys, Sean Green, editor and publisher of Biz Magazine, Northwest Louisiana sole business uh, media conglomerate if you want. And uh, I'm helping out with the uh, tech to market event coming at the end of this month. And today, talking to me as one of the guest speakers for that event, his name is Mark LaCour. Hey Mark. Hey Sean, how you doing today? I'm good man, thanks for joining us. Yeah, no problem, this is gonna be a great event. Yeah, and, and Mark is, uh, He's, he's no stranger to uh, the in, one of the major industries in our area. He is a oil and gas expert, speaker, and podcaster. He has more than 20 years in the industry and has sold more than $300 million to the oil and gas industry and had over 2,200 meetings with companies from all over the globe. And now he is a top podcaster for the oil and gas industry. So, Mark, is that why you're coming to Shreveport? Because we're just oil and gas. That's what we do. We well, you know the great metropolitan of Shreveport, <laughs> and the only reason I can say that is I'm from Louisiana. Uh, my actual dad's side of the family is from Morning Sport, Bossier City area. So oh wow! Hey, yeah. yeah, welcome. And I actually own some capped gas wells in that area as well. So, so I, I know that area. Uh, but no, that's not the reason I'm coming. The reason I'm coming is that something miraculous has happened in the north part of Louisiana in the fact that now there's this startup scene. And if you would have asked me 10 years ago, where in Louisiana would the startup scene take off? I would have never guessed Shreveport, but it's incredible, right? All these bright, young, smart people trying to do really cool stuff, have that spirit of entrepreneurism. And I'm actually come to the event and I'm actually talk about all of the startups, all the entrepreneurs I've seen over the years in oil and gas, what they've done well, the mistakes they made and what companies can do and, and individuals can do if, if they actually want to enter that entrepreneurial world in, in the oil and gas industry. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Like, uh, and, and you're not the first person to tell me that. I mean, a lot of people can't believe that we've had this this weird grass. Now, it's weird because it's unexpected. This, I guess is what I should say. This unexpected grassroots movement of people starting businesses and turning them into legitimate businesses that employ dozens, pe dozens of people. And nobody thought, like you said 10 years ago, that was going to happen. Yeah, yeah, I would have been the last one. The same way with the podcast. If you would have told me five or six years ago that people would pay me to talk, I would have said <laughs> you're insane. And, and yet now we're sitting on the top seven oil and gas podcasts in the world with launching number eight in October. Um, so it's just it's just a great time to be in the industry. Well, let, let, since you since you broached that, let's dive in there. Um, tell me a little bit about your experience in the oil and gas industry and what how that led to you becoming a podcaster. Okay, so your audience to get the truth, which a lot of people don't know. It's actually a great story. So I got my start 20-something years ago with the phone company in the East, Bell South. They gave me their oil and gas book of business because no other salesperson wanted it because it was hard, had declining revenue. Um, I jumped into it. took me about three years to learn the industry, and I turned it around, and we grew like crazy. Um, then eventually, AT&T bought us. It was no longer a good fit for me. Um, I went to work for Forrester Research and had their oil and gas key accounts, the most important accounts to them. And that's where I learned market research. And then about almost 10 years ago, um, Forrester and I decided to part ways because basically they capped my commission, which just aggravated me. So I started my own company out of anger, and that was Modal Point. Right? And we did really well. I think even to this day, if you Google oil and gas sales experts, I think organically I still come up on that first page. I think Google still thinks I'm like the best guy on the planet for that. And about Five years ago, my marketing guy came to me and said, hey, we should start a podcast. And I looked at him and said, that's a stupid idea. I don't have time for it. <laughs> Obviously, I was wrong. You fast forward to now, and uh, we, uh, Modal Point is now my speaking platform, right? So I get paid to speak. And we, uh, Modal Point owns Oil and Gas Global Network, which is our new media company. And like I said, we have the top seven, soon to be eight, oil and gas podcasts in the world. And we're growing like crazy. We have 17 more podcasts that we're slated to do between now and the end of 2020. And we have all these live events that are now chained to the podcast. We have one in Denver, one in Midland, one in Houston, get ready to launch one next month in Pittsburgh, in Calgary, Bay Area, San Francisco, blah, 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 right? So what is amazing about all this is that the, 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 the influx of new process and new technology has come into the oil and gas industry at the fastest space I've ever seen it in the last 20 years, it, but just in the last couple of years. We're in this hydrocarbon abundant world, right? So that shale geology is not just in the US, it's everywhere in the world. More or less, prices are going to stay low, which means companies have to drive efficiencies. You combine that with the merging populations in the world, so think of India and China, who today don't necessarily need Tupperware 
or light switches or lipstick, but they will the next couple generations because by 2050, two thirds of the world will live in cities where all that stuff comes from oil and gas. So the downstream part, the petrochemical part of the industry is booming. So it's just a great time to be in the industry. But this new younger workforce has come in combined with the growth in, in downstream, especially petrochemicals globally, combined with this low crude price environment we're in for a long time, means that we need to drive efficiencies. And the best way we can drive efficiencies is with the proper uses of technology. So f forever, I mean, look at this. I got a wearable. This is a wearable by real wear, right? And they're heavy in oil and gas. If you would have told me five years ago I could put a computer on my head and talk to somebody across the world while I'm adjusting the valve, it would have been insane, right? But this is becoming the norm. This is awesome. And I mean, is that, is that really what you get to the heart of in your podcast? Is it, is it, is it just giving people the, the lowdown the, or, or is it more technical with technical know-how? Tell me a little bit about what people, if they listen to your podcast, what they can expect. Yeah, so each show is different. So our number one show is Oil and Gas This Week, and that's a topical news show. Me and Jake Cooley do that show. Because regardless of what political spectrum you're on, neither side gets it right. You have one side that hates us and one side that doesn't know what we're doing. So we break down the news articles and try to tell you the truth of what's really going on. We have a health, safety, and environmental show because HSE is probably the biggest driving metrics in the, in, in the oil and gas industry globally. We just launched the oil and gas tech show just a couple of weeks ago. Speaking of tech, right? Um, we're getting ready to launch an offshore show. We have an existing onshore show. We have an oil and gas industry leader show. So each one is different depending on what slice do you have curiosity of the, about the oil and gas industry? What part do you want to learn? And like I said, we literally have 17 more shows that we're standing up between now and the end of 2020. So we're busy, but it's fun. Yeah. And what, wh I mean, why, why podcasting? What about that speaks to you um, over just doing live events or even, you know, staying in sales? W what made you say, this is what I want to do? Um, I saw the opportunity and, and we talk about the commercial success, right? We're growing our sponsors are big companies, companies like IBM, Baker Hughes, blah, blah, blah. But the part I don't talk about very often is literally every day I have 10 to 20 young people around the world reach out to me and go, Hey, Mr. LaCour, I heard you say that my cell phone would not exist without plastics, from natural gas. And I call bullshit. And I went and did the research and Oh my God, do you know my shoes and the pain on my bicycle and my girlfriend's lipstick comes from oil and gas. So, one young person at a time, we're changing the perception of our industry. I sincerely believe the oil and gas industry is the most beneficial industry in the history of mankind to the human species. It's just we've let this get away from us, and now there's a lot of people out there that don't understand the benefit and the prosperity our industry brings. So it's not just the commercial success of the podcast. It's telling the stories. And one of the things I think is really cool is this new younger workforce does just-in-time learning. So my generation was different. If I wanted to learn about well control, I would spend my company's money, I'd come to Houston, I'd go to well control conference, and for three days I would learn about well control because there was no internet. Now, if you want to learn about well control, you can pull your phone out and you go well control and you will learn right there. This is where the podcasts live, right? And so the advantage of the podcast is people can listen to it and learn while they're doing something else. I mean, everybody that listens to podcasts tends to do it while they're working out, commuting, washing dishes, and we're in their head. It's not like they're watching something, right? They, they're engaged with us. So it's, it's just a wonderful thing. Our audiences are so loyal. Um, literally, when we miss an episode, the first thing we hear is, are you okay? Not where's the episode. <laughs> when Hurricane Harvey happened, we yeah. raised we raised 70 some odd thousand dollars from our audiences. We had people from Bangladesh giving us a dollar because that's all they could afford, but they wanted to help. And so podcasting is more than just audio. Podcasting is building a community around things that we have in common. And, and I love that. Yeah. And I mean, and it's, it really is a community because before people who loved a certain thing and it can be everything from like toys I have behind me to what you do, they suffered in silence a little bit because they didn't have the connectivity to find other people that love what they love. And now you have, you have newsletters, you have websites, you have podcasts, you have YouTube shows. And you built this huge community of people who all love and care about this thing and they care about each other. And kind of tangentially related to that thought is the, like you talked about earlier, the entrepreneurial scene in Treeport. You're going to be here in Treeport at the end of this month uh, for Tech the Market. Uh, what can people expect to, to get from you or to hear from you while you're here? So, so first thing, it should be fun. So hopefully I'll make people laugh. 
when people walk out that room, I'm hoping they walk out of the room with at least a visual or mental roadmap on what does success look like when you when you're have an entrepreneurial spirit, but you want to bring that into an industry which historically doesn't like small businesses. You know, historically, BP or Exxon or Chevron would not do business with you if you were small because you were a risk. Well, now that's changed. They all have their own internal venture capital groups because they know what they need to compete in the future is not going to come from some big, huge company. It's going to come from a little two-man startup in Shreveport, Louisiana, right, or Chile or Rio de Janeiro. And so, so, so when you come sit in my session, I'm going to literally talk through the nuts and bolts of what I've seen the startup communities do well in oil and gas and the mistakes that are common that, that ends up tanking a lot of those companies. A, a perfect example is everybody thinks about capital. Everybody goes, well, I can't be a startup until I get capital. Yeah, you can. You can bootstrap it, right? And if you bootstrap it, there it's slower growth, but then you own what you're doing. Nobody else can tell you what to do. And a lot of entrepreneurs don't understand the moment you take venture capital or investment money, you're now working for them, right? So little things like that, little things like you and I talked about sales. Sales is the most important thing an entrepreneur can learn how to do because that's the only way money comes in the door. And even if you don't think you're good at it, it's a skill you can learn. So that's the sort of stuff we're going to talk about. Okay. Uh, are you going to do a live podcast? Did I hear that right? That you think yes, we're going to do a live podcast. I don't see it in the agenda. It's going to be in the afternoon, I think, or the even in the uh, the uh, after party. But yeah, yeah, we're bringing the Oil and Gas Tech podcast to Shreveport, and we're going to do a live broadcast from from the actual event itself. It's going to be awesome. That's awesome. And can people find you on the podcast app on iTunes? Yep. Spotify, gonna, all those things? Everywhere. Any place there's a podcast, we're there. If you just start searching for Oil and Gas, we should pop up number one, either in iTunes or Stitcher or Google Play, uh, Podbean, any of those things, because we are the top podcast in the world. But if you want to go check them out, the easiest thing to do is um, either open up your phone and search for us and search for Oil & Gas Global Network. Oil & Gas Global Network is the parent. So all seven podcasts now are under there. And as we add new podcasts, they'll be there as well. Okay, very cool. And I, like, I want to close this. Uh, I mean, not that it's been, it hasn't been positive, very positive, a lot of information. Uh, but let's let's close on a really positive note. Uh, for an for an oil and gas entrepreneur, or even just a general entrepreneur watching this interview right now, um, or listening to it, what's one piece of advice you'd want to offer them? Cash flow is king. <laughs> it doesn't matter how profitable you are on paper. Look, I went through this myself. When I started Modal Point, I had a year's worth of cash saved up because everybody said you should have six months, and I doubled that. I still ran out of cash. Right. The most important thing you can do is make sure you have positive cash flow. Um, the profitability comes later, but you got to be able to pay yourself. You got to be able to pay your people and cover your bills. That's probably the number one mistake I see. And I made it myself. I've lived it. So that's probably the number one mistake I see entrepreneurs and startups make. Just focus on cash flow in the beginning. Very good. Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. We look forward to, I look forward to meeting you in person. I look forward to having you back in Shreveport. Yep. We're going to have a blast. See you soon, Sean. All right. Have a good one.